It will be the law you know. Uh, can we talk about OnlyFans content things? I learned something fascinating these past couple days. Yeah, yeah friend. So, what do you, what do you okay. want to talk? What do you want to talk about? So I learned recently space. that OnlyFans people that are like specialize in like um, pornography and stuff like so that. adult because, content. Like, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah the, the adult content. Know, the small fraction of OnlyFans that functions as adult content. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So adult content on OnlyFans and. It's shaken up the porn industry right now because mm-hmm. the porn industry is trying to keep it like in the porn industry, but people are like, fuck you, I'm going to be an independent, well, screw you, I'm going to be an independent yeah. artist. Yeah. And an independent content creator, right? And so they can get a bigger cut of the profits. What's wild to me is what I've learned is that I should have realized this. There are adult content creators on OnlyFans that reach out to other adult content creators for collaborations. Yeah. And then they meet up. Yeah. And then. And then they Create and then they adult f- content they f- together. They fuck then, each other. Yeah, friend. You yeah, can say that. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't realize it I, takes this, two to tango, actually, like, as they say. Yeah, but you don't need the second person, depending on what you're Well, maybe you don't need the right? second uh-huh. person, Fran, but I no, I do I do like that as well because I can imagine it being like very marketing focused, right? Like, like how is that conversation going? Like I just want to know, I mean, like, hey, I saw the, your content, HMU. If you ever want to collab and then like. I, I feel like you need like a middleman, like a, a marketing firm who's like, I yeah, I've been running the thing and I've noticed that uh, a lot of your fans would like you to take a big curvy schlong up the anus. And I actually have another man. He has a very nice curvy schlong and specializes in anal activities. It's the world's oldest profession. Only fans. <laughs> They know what they're doing. They're smart cookies. They're they're small business owners, and I can appreciate. It. I support small business. <laughs> uh, well, welcome to the Lore You Know, a uh, podcast where we talk about the benefits of capitalism for small business owners in mm-hmm. the modern day society on the internet, and God, dive into the love fantastical capitalism. and often convoluted lore of media that we grew up with and love. And here to bring you the mostly correct facts about made up things this week are me, Fran. I'm Ethan. And I'm CJ. Listen, Lizzie got me into these like five hour think pieces on YouTube and you just like, you're like, you just listen to them. They're about something. And and it's like, wow, I'm learning technically. This is knowledge I'm gaining. all of it. And then I was inspired to make this podcast. That's not true. We were already making the podcast by that point. But that's the idea, right? You put us on in the background. I know you're listening you know, passively, that's okay. We're here to we're mm-hmm. here to make it seem like you're surrounded by friends because you are. It's us. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much the only service we're offering here. If we're being honest, making you making your dog feel like there is someone else in the room while you're <laughs> away getting groceries or whatever. Yeah. Play play our podcasts oh. on repeat just for your Man, pets while a- you're at home, so they don't feel so lonely. That's win an win. We can target pet audiences. Yeah. Okay, I guess. Yeah. Kind of a yeah, weird dogs pivot. specifically. Just specifically oh, dogs. Wait, do we, uh, Chegway, uh, dogs, John Wick. Okay. That's right, Ethan. He had a dog. Okay, so currently there are three movies out. There's just about to be a fourth one. Whoa. Ah. And Topical? they have already planned a fifth one after that. Oh, my mom's so happy. There is officially going to be like a John Wick cinematic universe. Ah, the JWCU. Uh, What? Mm -hmm. What? So they're going to have like spinoff movies? Yeah, so the fifth movie, Ballerina, uh, Keanu will be in it as John Wick, but he is not the primary character. It is going to focus on a different assassin lady. Okay. Uh, Is she epic? So uh, it's probably going to be pretty epic. That's what will will we learn about her today? No. Or are we just focusing on Keanu? Today we're going to focus just on the first three movies. There is some other material. There's like a small comic book series. There's a video game. Oh, yeah, there, there is, was that video game. 
Yeah, it was not very good. Which he video like game? Weird. John Wick Hex? John Wick Hex. Fuck yeah, that game is not very good. I played it, <laughs> and I like that kind of shit, and it is rough. It's rough to get through. <laughs> it was not very good, so we're just not going to talk about it. There's okay. like, there's no official bit. John Wick lore yet. There's no official oh. canon, I should say, but uh, that... Hex ain't gonna make it. Let's mm. be honest here. <laughs> well, that that kind of happened in the in between, like before the first movie, anyway. So I don't know. Right. Yeah. There's also like the comic book series has him just like as a kid in South America, which I think it came out after the first movie, and so they're like, well, we don't know exactly where John Wick is from. And then the third movie was like, he's from from Russia. Oh. And <laughs> Oh, and so yeah, they were like, true. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he just when he was eleven took a quick trip to South America. In South America for that know, one comic, as, as children do. Well, he, yeah, he's he's I mean, he was training to be an assassin or something. So maybe I don't he know. Was, that, it, it's a study abroad program. It for does. The all, right, program. all right, I guess we're gonna talk about the comic for a second yeah, because right. I do <laughs> love. I love its introdu- introduction to John Wick. It's so fucking stupid. Uh, so there's just this like this gang of criminals. You know how they do. They're just kind of chilling. They just pulled a heist, and yeah, John enough. Wick, John Wick, twelve years old, uh, like steals the money that they got from the heist, like right in front of them. You know, it's not right. like a. And no, he's only twelve. He's, right, he's still in training. He's he's running away from them like. <laughs> and they're they are like shooting at him, but they're also having a good time with it. They're like, "Oh, John, you silly dog!" Uh, bang, bang, bang! Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you got us again, you John Wick. <laughs> fires some bullets around them, you. One of them finally pulls out a rocket launcher and fires it at him. Uh, they don't kill John, but kill like thirty other people. And then they're like, "Well, now we need to kill this whole village in South America to cover up." And John's like, I feel a little responsible for this. I mean. <laughs> Survivor's guilt? That's, yeah, that, like, I don't know if it was his fault necessarily. He didn't, he, I don't think he could have known that they would do that. They had a rocket launcher? Quite honestly. <laughs> I don't know. Like, you know, a lot of the time we were like, oh, that was irresponsible. But he was only like 12. And he, like, mm-hmm. in a court of law, he couldn't have reasonably <laughs> assumed that that was going to happen if he stole that money. So, <laughs> and children are the products of their upbringing at that point. I so. thought John Wick so. did like mm. a Samurai Jack thing where when he was a kid, he like went to different places to train with all the warriors there. Do you remember that episode in Samurai Jack? Huh? Yeah, that was absolutely rad. Yeah, it was. Ooh, can we do Samurai Jack sometime? Yeah, maybe. That'd be fun. I like Samurai yeah. Jack. Uh, there's not ever yeah, going to be any more of them, though. I mean, this, right. it's I over mean, now. We'd be talking about how the first few seasons are amazing and then shitting on the last season for half an hour. You know, it'd be a good time. Yeah, but he gets to fuck. So if you wanted your soon to be non-canon origin for John Wick, uh, a lady shot a rocket launcher at him and killed a bunch of people. Right. And he swore vengeance. We don't do non-canon in here, Ethan. Take us to the take us to the realm of the true, the true, true, the the lore, you know. Uh all right, the lore you know, John Wick starts in a rough spot in life, right? His wife has just passed away from horrible illness, and he's just kind of aimless. He's very sad, and he doesn't seem to have a lot going on. Uh, as a parting gift, his wife has set up for him to have a puppy sent to him oh. with a final message to like that he needs someone to grieve with and he should find peace. And so this is I have told Lizzie this many times. Men have to die before women do. Like the reason that our lives are shorter <laughs> generally is because if there's a if there's a relationship with a man and a woman and the the woman dies, the man is just not a human person anymore. They're just broken. A lady can move on and she can like, you know, find peace. <laughs> And she'll get older, and then they'll do the crazy things that they do in the old folks' home, where they all, you know, get syphilis together, and it's a it's a big I mean, fun time. That's where the Golden Girls shows come mm-hmm. from. Is just exactly. 
Oh, I, I remember. Yeah. I remember when my husband was alive, but the fucking's been great since then. So here's <sighs> to you, Johnny. Mm hmm. I mean, I get that's why they don't have shows that are like four old guys hanging out because they would just be like, it would just be sad. I'm very sad. <laughs> so I've taken up woodwork. I miss my wife. Me too. I also miss your wife. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> All right, well, uh, now you're changing my I'd life. Watch, I, I'd watch that show, actually. <laughs> so, John Wick's having a rough go of it, but he has, like, just started the healing process, right? He's got this new dog to take, take care of, and he's like, maybe I'm going to make it through this. And then some dipshit gangster's kid named Yosef breaks into his house, oh, kills yeah. his dog, and steals his car. Mm -hmm. It just for <sighs> which is like, yeah, this is the part that's weird because as we'll find out, everyone the part <laughs> everyone knows who this guy is. He like specifically he's like the boogeyman or whatever, right? Yeah, he's or the babushka. Baba Yaga. The Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga. The babushka. Yeah. No, he's the Baba Yaga. <laughs> But no, he's like everyone knows who he is. I know that he's like some like he's like a kid. He's like a, or he's like the you know a gangster kid. He's like twenty or whatever. There's no fucking way you get that far in life and be like, hey, you know the boogeyman? He's real and he lives in this one house. <laughs> Don't go there. Right. I mean, yeah. If so, if we're getting into it, I had to look it up because I was like, this seems like he should know this. So it doesn't tell us exactly how old Yosef is. His actor was right around 30 when he played him. Right. So if we're being generous, he's in like his mid-20s, right? Sure. Uh, John Wick retired five years ago. <laughs> right. He would have been and <laughs> sentient when he was around. He would have <laughs> been a full adult and he would have been like, wow, suddenly my dad has a lot more like power and influence and everybody says it's because the Baba Yaga like murdered all of our enemies. Yeah. That's weird. Well, and he <laughs> entitled rich boys. I guess. It's just, it's just bizarre. Are a product of their generational wealth are not it's just, but like everyone, to be in the everyone in this world recognizes John Wick via his car. Like people, like he probably it's like, just like his didn't car pay attention because he's like, why should I? His care? His car pulls into a chop shop, and the chop shop guy's like, oh no, I'm not taking that. That's John Wick's car. Like they know <laughs> what you they are know. likely dead. Yeah, you're dead <laughs> now. Like they know. Like everyone knows about this guy because it's the same thing as what we always talk about. If there's like. A, a literal monster in the world or like an unstoppable force you would know like you would remember these things right like i'm not, not gonna nice. i'm not gonna go in the ocean it's scary everyone knows it's scary i'm just gonna stay out of it whenever bad things happen in the ocean i go you should have known that that was gonna happen humans aren't meant scary. to be there once again young man I guess he thinks he's right, in young man right. thinks, Does, he's, thinks invincible. he's invisible. Mm -hmm. Doesn't give two fucks about what's actually going on around him. I, and I know. There's I no know. consequences for him. Okay. So he's an idiot, and that's not surprising. He is an idiot, that's just and they really lay into on, it. Like these ten yeah. boys, but he's yes. really dumb. So we get we got a little ahead of ourselves here, yeah. but yes, Yosef. He wants John Wick's car. John Wick won't sell it to him. So Yosef breaks into his house with some of his oh. uh, gangbanger boys, kills the dog, steals the car. When John Wick's not uh, there. Otherwise, they would have been dead. <laughs> Otherwise, they would have been dead. Yes. But yeah, unfortunately for jo Yosef, John Wick was formerly the greatest hitman who ever lived. He's just a living legend. Everybody knows about it. The minute Yosef brings his car to a chop shop, the guy's just like, that is nope. John Wick's car. This is the deadliest thing anyone has ever done. He's just like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not keeping that in here. You can get rid mm -hmm. of that. So John Wick get decides, well, I guess if I can't find peace through raising a dog, I will find it through murdering Yosef and his I entire will find, family. I will find vengeance via murdering everybody. I mean, he's a he's a child. he's a man <laughs> with nothing to lose and a set of skills that makes him a very dangerous man. Yeah. Now, so we'll talk about justified that one violence. Later. <laughs> I, do you uh, know? Wait, hold on. Do you know how many Taken <laughs> movies there are? There's four. Like five. Five oh, four, now. Okay. okay, I guess there's only Is, three. All right, the the taken. No, nope, there's three movies and a television series. 
Oh, is it like <laughs> it's probably set up like twenty four though? Or like uh, every episode's like who's getting taken? Like in the in the Everybody. Taken television series, she's actually just getting married, and Liam's like, I don't, oh, I don't this, approve. She, I'm she, gonna find you. She's taken. It's on Lifetime. <laughs> he just keeps getting okay. hit. He keeps getting hit on by women. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm taken. I, I'm, I'm taken. I'm taken two. I'm taken three as well. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good joke. That's a that's a good oh, joke. God. That's definitely gonna be in the episode. Just make it a short. <laughs> the John Wick movies unlike the Taken movies, are known for having just amazing fight choreography. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's, I mean, we can't call it realistic because it's like very batshit crazy, but it's very grounded and has like huge attention to detail, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like one of the things that, ev that everybody thought was awesome in the first movie and in all the subsequent ones is that like, John Wick, when he shoots a gun, it has the number of bullets in it that it's supposed to, mm -hmm. and he has to like work reloading into the battles. Yeah. Um, it's, it's it's I would I would say it's like um, it's kind of how like in Star Wars the lightsaber fighting, it's like it's well not the not the original trilogy which is <sighs> good but like in the you know like Episode three the the fighting is really well choreographed but it like yeah. is choreographed like you wouldn't do those things well, yeah. in a sword fight so it's the same kind of thing like these fights they're not doing what you would do in a fight but it's just so tightly choreographed that it looks amazing to watch which is why well the and also like see like ethan was saying like people just appreciate the realism mm -hmm. of the gun right N not this yeah it's like a physical as like a physical object instead yeah. of just being like a magic thing that just shoots bullets out of it constantly yeah. right it's it's like you know these the john wick movies stand in like stark contrast to all of the like marvel movies of mm -hmm. today which are very actiony but also feel kind of like floaty and ephemeral like the hits they do don't seem to really matter until the story says that they do Kind of right. not, you know. Right, because there's no uh, there's no tension if there's no consequence to anything. And you're like, well, they're just going to fight until someone wins. And that's, like, that's what's <laughs> going to happen. But in John Wick, like, you know, he gets beat up. Like, it's nice to have a hero who's not invincible or who mm -hmm. is not, like, if they get, like, if they get beat, they're just, like, done. Because that's usually what happens is they're either, like, they either win and nothing happens to them or they're just get beat down and they're like, ah, I I'll get you later, Thanos. Thanos, you <laughs> dick. <laughs> Fuck you, Thanos. <laughs> uh, one of the first things he does, he's like, "All right, well, I'm gonna go kill a guy. So obviously, I should take a pickaxe down into my basement and just like he breaks the foundation of his basement where he apparently had just like sealed in concrete a chest full of weapons and gold coins yeah. from his yeah. past life. That's what I do uh, in Minecraft as well. You just cover it over <laughs> so it looks like the rest of the floor, but you know where it is. I mean, that's why I bought a house. Is that not why people buy houses? Do you bury, yeah. do you bury things? in the foundation yeah. of the house yeah. that you buy? That's the whole point, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I love no? it. <laughs> I just like the idea of putting like, I don't know, like a bunch of college books and then some like, old video game <laughs> stuff and being like this life is over now <laughs> yeah i put all of my uh music education books and mm -hmm. sheet music inside the foundation of my house because i left that major behind me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <sighs> we're on to a better place now yeah now we make uh, podcasts <laughs> <laughs> take that past <laughs> self idiot well john wick is back to his past self so he takes all of these uh you know he suits up he takes his pile of gold coins and he goes to his favorite hotel, the Continental. Mm. Uh, and so I'm, I'm going to take a little aside from like getting into the plot here just to talk about how the John Wick universe works because Isn't it all just. Yeah. Wasn't that hotel like a real hotel in New York? It's a wedge one, right? Or is that something different? The wet is that wedge build an iron horse building or something like that? The flat iron? Or is that flat iron? Flat iron, yeah. No, that's is that wh not what the That's where the Daily Bugle is in Spider Man. <laughs> but um, no, it's not that. Yeah. No, so, okay. I thought that made an appearance in this movie, but maybe not. So you you are you are right that like the John Wick series takes place in in our world, right? And the concept is just that 
everything is kind of secretly something like more sinister. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, the Continental is just a famous hotel chain that is very highbrow and fancy, but it is also the secret hub of all assassin work in the uh, world. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is, it, I mean, it, I don't know if it is the flat iron, but it, it looks a lot like it as far as like what it looks like. But the flat iron okay, is right. not a, it's not a, well, maybe it is a repository for oh. all the assassins in the world. Oh. It's, uh, wait, hold on. It's also known as the beaver building. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't know why. So, the, the Continental in New York uh, has two of our main characters. Winston is the uh, the like owner and proprietor of the New York Continental, and he is a good friend of John's. Pretty much, pretty much everybody also seems to like really like John. Like there are some people who are you know like generally the very evil coded people who are like I hate that you have an ethical code, John. But everybody else is like, yeah, John's pretty much the best guy ever. Why would you steal his car? I, the ethical code is weird for a person who murders for a living. But yeah, I guess, he, yeah. I mean, I guess he won't like kill it. children. That's what what a right. paragon yeah, of I mean, ethics. <laughs> yeah. I got the sense that like he's a, he's a guy in that universe of like, God, I hate that man, but. Damn it, do I respect him? him. Yeah, basically. Yeah. A yeah. lot of people are like that. It's just that they know that if he wanted to kill them, that he could, and, but he doesn't. They can respect him through fear. That's fine. I guess. Uh, That's how Fran prefers to be respected. <laughs> so, Is that not the way to be respected? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess it works for John, so. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Winston owns Continental, good friend of John's. Do you remember in the, se in the shows, CJ, is he called Karen or Sharon, the front desk concierge? Uh, I think it's just Karen. I mean, that's the okay. that's the like Greek pronunciation, and that would he would be like the ferryman. So, right, yeah, that, so that would make the, more the, sense. The concept, I'm pretty sure the the Greek pronunciation is Sharon, and uh, that's that's the thing that like is weird because people always say Karen because Sharon is a girl's name. I I the ferryman on the river Styx is pronounced Karen. Yeah, okay. it just is that. I mean, at least according to the video game Hades, and that's where I get all my lore from. So, yes, John is good buddies with uh, the owner Winston and the uh, front desk man Karen, uh, and he comes in. Everybody's happy to see that John is back uh, because the the Continental it's the hub of assassination work in the world. It is the primary place where people find like freelance assassination jobs it Sorry, is quick update it's sharon apparently it's not that that's incorrect whatever it is. it is it says john wick and payday pronounce karen as sharon instead of karen my sharona okay he's my okay, sharona awesome. i love it uh so don't get come at us in the comments okay you come at us in the comments <laughs> or, or do yeah, yeah. God, or we do need we need engagement it's engagement baby so the Continental is the, it's the home ground of assassins, and it's like this because it is hitman holy ground. No one staying at the Continental may be harmed, provided, you know, that they're following the rules of the hotel. People seem to break this rule often enough that it doesn't seem all that holy, but... Anyone who does break that rule has basically like put a price on their own head. There's no like, business on <laughs> continental ground, Fran. Business, mm -hmm. the business being, you know, killing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we all we all have to talk like mobsters. Everything has like you know the second phrase. Ah, yes. It's, I would do it's so poorly. the business. Would you like to? Uh, you know, order order services. Have you have bodies taken away? Uh, it's very cute. It's a lot to keep honestly. track of. It's cute, honestly. It's cute. I just, I, I would not fare well. <laughs> um, so the Continental functions as just like a one-stop shop for everything that an assassin needs, right? They've got the jobs. They also offer weapons and equipment. They Ooh. offer any kind of like intel and information you would need, medical treatment, transportation, 
there's a fucking guy, the cartographer there, who just, like, has the blueprints for, like, all buildings and a bunch of, nice. like, keys for secret entrances and such. Uh, it's a dope job. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good job. This whole continental, like, service industry works on those gold coins that John was bringing in. Mm -hmm. So to talk about that, we need to talk about how the gold coins work. The gold coins <laughs> are the best econ Okay, so there's like a couple economies that are my favorite. Uh, the economy in the Space Cowboy, uh, Cowboy Bebop, is yeah. one of my favorites uh, because that one makes no earthly sense. The, it costs like a million dollars to purchase food, but then it also costs like $20 million to kill a human soul. And then it's like $200 million will like buy you nothing, but then like $2 billion can buy you like a space station. So it's like, there's no, like the interval between these is like exponential in some weird way. These coins are very similar to that, except the opposite, <laughs> where it's just one coin equals a thing. You are trading your coin for a good or service. And that it's just it's it's just flat across the board. Yeah, so we we had a lot of fun with it when we first watched it because yes, John Wick has like paid a gold coin for like you know, an assault rifle, you pay a gold coin per, like, dead body that they, you know, a service, like, removes and just, like, hides any proof yeah, of. cleaner. And he also, he pays a gold coin for a drink at the bar. Right. Which, and then I oh. think tips her a gold coin. Which, it's just, so. it's just, like, it's absurd. Like, the, the a universe where everything costs the same thing means that you're, you are literally separating everything into, like, countable units that you can pay money for. And then you just, you just buy that. It's like, if you, if you give them a coin at the bar, is that as much as you want to drink for the day? Or is that just per well, drink? That would be absurd. You get paid like a gold <laughs> coin to kill a man. If you want to get drunk at the bar, you'd have to kill like 20 men. Well, at least I would have to, I don't have a problem. Well, well here's the thing, CJ. I have figured out how the gold coins work. Oh my God. Oh, oh. so. The gold coins right there, this this currency of the underworld, they do have a real world value just in the sense that they're made out of gold. Right. Uh, okay. So fans, I've seen anywhere from $2,000 to $10,000. It's somewhere in that range. But, that is an expensive but the, drink. But that, drink costs but that doesn't coin. matter because Holy all crap. like pennies are- It does not matter. Pennies are minted out of material that's worth more than a penny, rendering them worthless, True. and we should get rid of that. I'm going on record as yes. saying is I hate pennies and I want them to die. I second this statement. In fact, pretty much all coins except quarters are worthless, I, but whatever. And gold coins. Correct. And gold coins. I would... <laughs> I'm anti-penny. So, we're all anti-penny. We're all pro-gold coin. Fuck yeah. Uh, these gold coins are minted by the Continental, mm -hmm. and they are, like, a big part of what legitimizes the Continental as, like, the assassin powerhouse of the world. So the Continental is kind of like a... I mean, it is a sovereign nation in that it has an economy and can protect its assets, and... The fact that it exists within other countries makes it, I guess, a lot like the Holy Roman Empire. Is that a fair, <laughs> you know, that's, for everyone fair... for everyone who wants a good historical comparison? And we all know about the Holy Roman Empire, so I guess it would be a lot like that, yeah? That's a fair comparison, and we'll talk about them later, CJ. The Holy Roman uh, Empire? The Holy, just a little bit. Oh, my God. Oh, okay, shit. great. <laughs> um, so... Yes, the, the Continental mints these coins, and the coins don't represent a specific monetary value. They do represent Not a, a service rendered by the Continental or one of its affiliates. Um, so a thing. One thing. A th one, one thing. And here's, like, the creators have also said multiple times in interviews that the, the value of said thing depends on who spends the gold coin. So Absurd. a 
A gold no. coin coming from John Wick is more valuable than a gold coin like coming from that barkeeper who he gave one as a tip. If she tried to spend that gold coin, it would be worth less coming from her than it would be coming from John Wick. So it's just a built-in class system. Who, like, who has a ledger of how much each person <laughs> is worth? Like uh, you just the know. Continental does. Yeah, you just know. You, you know. You know, friend. When you work at a place, you start. You know, you meet everyone at some point, or at least you hear about them. So it's social standing. You get a social score. And then that determines how much your money is worth. Oh, that's exhausting. It, I can't even remember is, people's names. I can't remember. Well, you wouldn't be a scores. very good assassin, I don't think. <laughs> I would not. I would not. It is. Who it am is I supposed like to kill that. again? Yeah. I don't remember. What's their, what do they look like? I, oh, All white people look the same I, to I me. Killed, so. I killed someone. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I definitely killed a guy. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the, the coins work in this way because they do work on, like, a hierarchy system that the Continental keeps track of. Because these coins are exchanged for services from the Continental, they are given priority to, like, more important hitmen, right? If there's some, like, no-name who's just gotten into the business who wants to spend a gold coin, they're going to do John Wick's thing first if he wants to spend the same mm. gold coin. Um, so, when... It's it. Can it doesn't be kind of wait. Rigid. It doesn't. It just doesn't make sense. Hold on, because <laughs> I get that it's worth more during the transaction. Like I'm John Wick. This coin is worth more. But after the transaction, they're owned by the second person, which means they're all going to have the same value to that person because that person will try and spend them, and then will be worth whatever they are. It's not like the coin tells you where it right. came from previously. Until right. services is, are rendered, the value the, of the coin does not change. <laughs> the best way to think of it, again, is just as, like, a priority system, right? I like, get... the coin is not, like, spending for this service so much as it is, like, putting you in queue. But if you're someone more important, you go to the front of the queue. So it's like uh, the Disney Fast Pass lanes and stuff like just, that. There just wouldn't be sure. a reason I like inherent. the Roman Empire better, but sure, the Disney Fast... <laughs> I guess that's pretty similar. Sure. Um, so... It can be kind of weird, too, because when somebody gets a bounty on their head, it is measured in real world money because they want like, you know, anybody who wants to try and kill this guy. Like, we want this guy dead. Right. Right. But when they specifically hire a higher level hitman to kill someone, that hitman would be paid in gold coins. But that I mean, the contract's coming through the Continental at that point, though. So they're they're the broker of the deal. They make the money and then they give them a favor in return. Right. Well, so how it how it works is that the high table, the the leaders of all of the crime of the underworld, they are <laughs> the, the ones thing who that exists. buy. Yeah, the thing that exists. They are the ones who buy in on these gold coins. They mm. pay the Continental a bunch of money for these gold coins, and uh -huh. they are, like, what funds the Continental in the biggest sense, right? Sure. The, okay. the Continental then in turn says, we will accept these gold coins for any of our crazy services that, like, just would not work in a normal capitalist system. Like you couldn't just have a guy sitting around in the cartographer's room. Like someone will come by eventually. <sighs> okay. And so they're set up like that. And then the high table is able to, you know, throw around the gold coins. Yeah. I'll give you 30 gold coins to do this job hitman. And he's like, Oh, well I would like to do that because then I can get 30 services from the continental. Right. Mm. All right. Keep that in mind, crypto idiots. Uh even this <laughs> fantasy assassin currency is still backed by real money at some point. Like there's value there. It, you can't just pretend like things have value and then spend them like they do and then it have value. Mhm. Mm so so Dude, this is what regular of... currency is. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> So yeah, this is this is like the system that ties the underworld together, right? The Continental mints the coins, the assassins want the coins, so the high table buys a bunch of the coins. Sure. But that of course leads you to the question, who the fuck is the high table? Who is the high table, uh, Ethan? That did I was I'm thinking that. I'm assuming mob bosses. <laughs> uh Fran, do you do you, when I say the high table, do you do you get it, Fran? Do you get their um, funny pun? A high table. N well, 
Because they smoke no. weed. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they control everything that happens under the table. So oh, they're... okay. I guess that's not a phrase that I hear very often. So that's not a. You don't get paid under the table, Fran. No. Oh. Okay. I'm a public Good. servant. Sm- smart, Fran. <laughs> you never admit to it. The high table is pretty weird. Because, you know, like Fran said, it's it's they like made puns. Of, they love puns. They lo- yeah, at least one. Uh, you were Somebody you were right does. on your guess, Fran. They are made up of like a lot of the crime families of the world. So they are part cartel, but they are also like part Illuminati. They like control the workings of the world around us Perfect. in secret, and yes. we just never know. Yes. This sounds and like an ancestry DNA report. They are also part <laughs> religion. Good, good. <laughs> I love I love my religious zealots to be controlling the world from behind the curtains just mm-hmm. as much as the next guy. Is there Hell a breakdown yeah. of how much of each religion? How much? No, they're they're like they're their own thing. Uh, they're the real religion, the one that's correct. You're gonna, you're gonna mm. see a lot of. Um, parallels to Assassin's Creed Fuck because yeah. we have the same like origin space here um but it's very funny they when they they like flex by saying like the high table has been around since the time of the Aztecs but like they originate in the Middle East so just like say the Persian Empire <laughs> like that's what you're talking about I've been around since Pokemon existed <laughs> Okay. I was around before Pokemon just. <laughs> oh. oh. Uh, An ancient. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they've been around since the time of the Aztecs, and they are this like combination of new and old crime, right? The high table has 12 members on it who are mostly representatives of the most powerful crime families of the modern era. So it's the and UN, but for the The UN families. for crime. Okay. Uh, or and just then the UN, also... am I right? Yeah, <laughs> fuck you, UN. Oh. I don't know. We, I don't, we I don't anti-penny a... and anti-United <laughs> I, I don't have a beef against the UN. I do have a beef <laughs> against those penny bastards. Curse you, zinc lobbyists. They have the, the powerful crime families but they are also like the highest member of the high table is the elder who is a man who just like wanders the Moroccan desert. Oh, like that's his thing. Right. Not a very good like corporate structure <laughs> to have your mm-hmm. top leader guy just be like searing through the desert. Okay. This doesn't so, seem like a really stable structure, but go for it. The reason they're like that is because while they're a mishmash of all kinds of stories, they are primarily taking their inspiration from the Hashashins, the Order of the Assassins, which is like a Assassin's real Creed. group that existed in the 1100s in Persia and Syria. Uh, okay. So I'm going to try and just give a basic overview because this is a very complicated subject and like okay. I've, al- I've already done a bad by calling them the Hashashins because that is a derogatory term that their oh. opponents used to call them because it just means like hash user like they used to call them the just like druggies um, you're gonna get can- so can- cancelled yeah you're gonna get cancelled yeah. cancelled by I mean, 1100s Persians <laughs> indeed uh, but you know, it's like the Europeans took that and ran with it. It's where the word assassin comes from, and just for simplicity, we're going to keep calling them the Order of Assassins. It's outrageous. Uh, the uh, the Order of Assassins were a sect of Muslims, and they had some castles that they controlled, uh, but they didn't have their own standing army. So okay. instead. Ooh. They spread their influence through subterfuge and high-profile assassinations. This was like their their primary way of like having influence on their world, right? And they got to be very good at it, but not in like the magical sense that we think of when we think of like you know super skilled assassins who like 
kill someone and then get out like a ghost, right? Yeah. It's like, no, they pretty much always the murderer would die hmm. because they had no intention of escaping. They were like re religious zealots that were willing to die for what they believed in. And so that's a very like effective way to kill someone is if you're like, if you just, yeah, okay. I don't care if I get caught. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So that's how they actually worked. But we have this like mystical concept of the like super skilled assassin for two big reasons. One is that the Europeans who were there, like this is 1100s, we're in some crusading time. Oh, right? hell yeah. Like, mm. Let's uh, do a crusade. So, right, we're coming to the Holy Roman Church here. Yeah. And they were baffled by the concept of like a group of people this large willing to die for what they believed in. And honestly didn't care too much about finding the real answers to this, right? They're pretty, the Europeans- Typical in like self-centered Europeans. Yes. They're, they're pretty notorious in this crusade period for just like considering all Muslims Muslims and just being like not paying any attention to the fact that there are many different groups who have many different like, you know, desires and purposes. And they're just like, I don't know, just put them all together. So the Europeans start spreading stories about the assassins and they make them like very legendary and romanticized and like magical and such, right? Because they're just Why? telling fun. Don't huh? they just want to like kill like them? Why would they be like, oh man, these guys? Oh, they're so fucking epic, dude. I mean, I wish we could, I wish we could kill them all, but like they're like ghosts. I mean, they I become mean, ghosts after they do the assassin because they just die, but they're ghost <laughs> ghostly. I feel like they did that because they couldn't kill them, and so they're like, "Oh man, it was oh, impossible." Oh, that's like what the yeah, like when a white person's like at their <laughs> job, yeah. and then they like fuck up, and they're like, "It mm -hmm. it couldn't have been done. It was an impossible task to begin with." <laughs> Correct. Right. Correct. It's it's the sort of thing I think in large part where you have crusades going on, right? But then you also have Europeans who are just doing Middle Eastern tourism, right? Mm -hmm. Like when the Crusaders are winning, they're like, I'm gonna go see the Holy Land and oh, look at these backwards people that I am going to look down on and just wow. kind of mysticize. That's a crazy cube y'all have, love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is reason number one. Reason number two is because, believe it or not, the assassins were not the only people who did assassinations, who did high profile murders in the Middle East. Whoa. Like <laughs> other people everybody... kill people? Other people kill people. Aww. But because the assassins were this kind of like insular group that wasn't like speaking out for themselves very much, it was very easy for any other group that was carrying out a murder to just blame it on the assassins. Oh. Yeah. So so like if you just took everyone at their like word, the assassins were killing fucking everybody. Oh, it's just right? like Antifa. <laughs> In a way. It's it's like the yeah, it's just <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it is. You can't deny. <laughs> so, if you imagine a world where all of these magical legends are true, and where the order of assassins really is the perpetrators of every like ho high profile murder for hundreds of years, right? Mm -hmm. And that power and influence never went away. That's the world that John Wick exists in. Okay, sounds like a good time. I mean, if you're an assassin, pretty if you're an assassin, pretty, it's a good, pretty deal. good deal. You're high. You're top I... of the social hierarchy in secret. In secret. In secret. In secret. High you have a lot of high gold table. coins that other people look at and they say, well, I don't know what that is, but it's made of gold, when so it's John, still impressive. When John Wick pulls out his old kit from the garage, there was only like 30 gold coins in there. That ain't that much. <laughs> yeah, but his gold coins worth a lot. Oh, that's a good point. He doesn't need uh, that many. God, you're so smart, friend. That's why we keep you around, because you actually listen. Yeah, I, don't, I have a problem with that. I have no idea what you homunculi are saying. <laughs> he does throughout the movies as well just like 
keep going to other secret stashes he had True. that have more and more gold coins you in would want to split them up that's the thing about yeah, pirate gold right the bank. pirate gold doesn't make sense you wouldn't put all your treasure in one place what if something happens to that place you put it all over the place right. you keep it on the boat i mean the pirates the pirates are in a rough spot because they don't own a home for them to put it under the that's the why you buy a home true that's why you gotta buy a house I mean the oh the sea is their home. That's why they put it on the beaches because they're like this is <laughs> this is the basement of the ocean, the ground. <laughs> God, that makes so much sense. Thank you, CJ. You're welcome. Uh, so, all right, well, we now we know enough about the John Wick world that we can get back to the movies. Awesome. So, Yosef and his father Vigo are shitting bricks, right? You know, every person in the criminal world except for Yosef knows who John Wick is. So as soon as his father Vigo hears that he pissed off John Wick, he's like, oh, this is the end. You have doomed this child. I don't Uh, remember if he's Russian. I think he is. He is is Russian. Okay. Yeah. Uh, And he was actually the guy who John Wick used to work for primarily. Ah. Uh, So when when John Wick met his wife and fell in love, he wanted to get out of the hitman life, which is something you don't normally do, right? Mm-hmm. So it's epic. Vigo, Vigo offered him, he's like, you can leave if you complete this task for me, which Vigo thought was impossible, right? It was his way to keep John Wick there, is I would like you to kill our entire rival like crime family. And John did that in a single night. Nice. Which is abs- <laughs> which is absurd, not because he did it. He's like, whatever, he's epic. But like, the whole binding force of the Continental and the High Table is that you're keeping all of the crime together. Like, you're one big happy crime family. <sighs> if you just wiped out another family, the higher ups would not be okay with that. Like, I get, like, he would did it. It was like sanctioned by this guy. But like, if there's like, there's a guy who can kill whole crime families, the higher ups would not just be like, "Well, he paid for it in the funny gold <laughs> cubes or whatever." So that's fine. God, it's all so confusing. I mean, I think for simplicity's sake, we can assume that uh, this rival crime family was not like a big one. You know, like okay. Okay. Vigo. Vigo does not sit on. He's not I a member give, of the high I table. I give you an impossible task: kill these three people that make up rival gang, and then we will talk. All right. Well, I mean, in this world, it's just so much stuff is secretly crime that, like, I'm sure there's plenty of rival crime families that are giving sure. people trouble. I mean, maybe he took out, but like, are... Arby's. Like, maybe Arby's was competing <laughs> with them, and he's like, you cannot destroy all Arby's. They are delicious roast beef sandwiches. <laughs> but he did it. And he did it in a and it was way. And it was a better world for it. <laughs> Fuck you, Arby's. I still eat that. I like their curly fries. I eat that garbage, friend, but I will not respect it. Curly fries are good though. All right. So Vigo, he's like, he's panicking a little, right? He puts a $2 million bounty on John's head just for like anybody to collect. (sighs) Uh, But then he also hires John's mentor, Willem Dafoe, to kill him. He goes, I like that hunting down my own protege. Spider-Man. Spider-Man, you and me is, will hunt down John Wick. That's he, what happens in Fortnite. I oh play I play as the Green Goblin in Fortnite. Amazing. Wow. You do? Yes, Fran. <laughs> Where have you been? Oh. We've spent so long since we played Fortnite. Out of the country. Fran, yeah, come play can... Fortnite with us on stream at twitch.tv slash cooking with spices. It's a it's All a right. hoot and a holler. A fun time even. Yeah. So yeah, I mean his name is actually Marcus, but I'm just gonna call him Willem Dafoe he's here Willem because Dafoe. I, he's, I, he's I need yeah, playing I need Willem Dafoe. Imagine, right, I need you to imagine Willem Dafoe in your head when you when you think about him. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He um, it's he's like he has all of the features of Willem Dafoe from Spider Man, but all of the stoicism of Willem Dafoe from The Lighthouse. Oh oh. <laughs> so. Yeah, we're just gonna leave that. <laughs> so, Anyone, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm cult- lighthouse reference. Sorry, I'm cultured <laughs> and have seen ads for the movie that he was in with. I want to say Harry Potter. 
No, <laughs> Twilight Guy. I do, That's the one. Yeah, all right. Got him mixed okay. up. Got him mixed up. All white people look the same to me. So Vigo puts a $2 million bounty on John's head. He hires John's mentor, Willem Dafoe, to kill him. I like that. When he finds out that John has like already made it to the Continental and is on holy ground, he offers double that bounty for anybody willing to break the Continental's rules and kill him in the hotel. But Willem Dafoe uh, goes, oh, I, I don't like the $4 million to take one life, Fran. I would kill both of you for $4 million. Do you know how much money that is? I mean, $4 million is a lot to kill a guy, but it is batshit insane to, for $4 million to do that in the Continental. Yeah, right. to get you blacklisted. This, yeah, well, this that's basically a death can't. sentence. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I have a feeling $4 is not going to last these people like the rest of their lives. Well, I don't uh, know. Considering uh, their economy is built on gold coins, that well, they would just value, they would just leave. It. They would just go. Four million dollars in New York City isn't going to last you very long. Well, they're not going to buy an apartment in New York City. They might. All right. I don't. I feel like they're not very responsible if their economy is based on gold coins that change value constantly. I think four million dollars I mean, is a lot, regardless. A but yeah, but, sure. It is. It is yeah, a bit bonkers to basically <laughs> sign your own death warrant for four million dollars. It's and, it's and it's so John Wick. Like, who right, do you, right. if he's this infamous, does anybody actually think they're gonna be able to kill him? Willem Dafoe, well, Willem Dafoe goes, oh, I don't like that Spider-Man. I won't kill John Wick for $4 million on the holy ground. I won't do it. I'll, I'll do it for some gold coins Maybe though. for gold coins though. So, okay. There is uh, someone else who is crazy enough to try and kill him on in the Continental. There's this <sighs> assassin lady named Miss Perkins, and she is fucking insane. Like, she seems to have some kind of like personal vendetta against John, but I think she just doesn't like his notoriety compared to hers. Like, right, she's like, right, wants and to be cooler jealous? than him. Yeah. Okay. Right. And it's it's just which just like makes it even more crazy, right? Because it's like not only would killing John Wick on continental grounds basically be suicide because like, you know, you would be for your life is forfeit, you know, the continental is against you. But also if you kill John Wick and your fair game for everyone else, everyone's gonna wanna kill you to prove that they're a badass, you know? Yeah. It's yeah, which yeah. is weird, because that's the whole thing, is John Wick's in this, like, in-between space where, like, nobody wants to kill him, even though he's, like, top dog, because, A, probably they don't think they that they could, but, B, they're just like, I don't know, he's, like, a living legend. Like, they all respect him. Yeah. They're like, I, I don't see the point, really. So, mm -hmm. most people are not about that but she's she's just like i don't know i'll just kill everybody and then everyone will love me i don't think she was shown enough right. attention as a child she's she's pretty fucking <laughs> crazy and that's important to bring up because so many characters in this series are fucking crazy right and it's like we have this whole complicated system of like the continental and the high table and the gold coins but it is really all held together by like spit and duct tape yep. because so many of these people are just fucking too insane to like follow those rules, even if it means like their own fucking yeah, death. It's weird. They're like a bunch of assassins got together. It's like if you took a <laughs> bunch of like crack users and they're like, actually, the world is run by crack users and they all have a secret organization where they'll get together and smoke crack and then just like do stuff. It'd be like, yeah, it would be insanity. Mm -hmm. And then they say, now you're not allowed to steal car radios to pay for crack, but when they really need some more crack, they'll just steal more car radios. <laughs> There's piles of car radios in the basement. <laughs> Seek help, crack users. I think you can get better, but goddamn. We're, yeah, we, we support crack users get better, but we are anti We're secret crack. Illuminati. Yeah, well, in fairness, crack was created by the American government to destroy mm -hmm. inner cities. So, right. In that we, sense, we can't have fuck an you. Illuminati made by the Illuminati. Fuck. I don't think it was created. I think it was just introduced. No, they made they, they manufactured crack cocaine and distribute it. It's all oh. part of Iran Contra, Fran. Oh, I it's all it Oliver good. North, Fran. It all goes back to that son of a bitch. I'm anti I'm Oliver North. This is great. Cody. This is an episode where we can say everything we're against. <laughs> Pennies against. Oliver North against. Yep. 
Uh, the <laughs> president we always make fun of, he's like, oh, well, yeah. Uh, his name I can't remember right now. Fuck that guy. Oh, what a surprise. I can't remember the old senile man's name. Is that I irony? I don't know. Pro irony on this <laughs> channel. <laughs> All right. Thank you for making so, those points clear. You're welcome. Yeah. While while CJ is having his freak out here, John is tracking Yosef to a nightclub that his dad is like hiding him away in, right? Uh, what a great he, place to hide him. Right, is, I mean, he's got well, it's like- it's gonna a make for a of... really cool action sequence, I think. It does make a really cool action sequence, yeah. So yeah. I highly as, recommend. Just like you would imagine, John almost gets the drop on him but his guards are able to save him in the like the confusion of the screaming crowds as a gunfight breaks out in this nightclub, and it's fucking epic. Yeah. Um, and the the song so slaps, and they use it for everything. John, John kills a bunch of Yosef's friends and a bunch of these guards and such, right? But he does get wounded in this big fight, John, no. so he heads back to the Continental to recuperate because he's supposed to be safe there, right? Well. Miss Perkins and Willem Dafoe, Dafoe both independently see this as the ideal opportunity to take him out, right? He's hurt, and they don't give a shit about the Continental Rules because they're crazy. Uh, so Miss Perkins is sneaking into his room while Willem Dafoe is setting up with a sniper outside. So a race Willem to kill John Wick, and he's wounded, <laughs> so race. it's possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, Willem sets up, and almost shoots John in the head. It just barely misses, which wakes him up just before Perkins comes into the room. So they then have a brawl while uh, Willem has like the sniper trained on them and is trying to find a good shot. Uh, but John is able to keep himself safe and beat Perkins. And like he holds her at gunpoint and says, you know, you need to give me some information about Vigo or I'm going to take you out and I'm allowed to because I'm defending myself here. Yeah, mm. there's there's a whole bunch of caveat rules to the whole they're, continental. Don't they're, kill people thing. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. but it's like, but if they're trying to kill you first, you're just defending yourself or whatever, you know. Uh, it's, like, it's right. Yeah. Castle doctrine. Exactly. So she tells John about uh, Vigo's like big front operation which is this church in little russia right so he spares her life and asks this other assassin who was staying just like next door like you i like tied her hands up you just watch her for me okay and he's like yeah sure you're john wick okay Ooh. uh i love you again <laughs> it's, what <laughs> no, no, nothing no, no, i got I was, it but it's fine <laughs> so again Perkins is fucking crazy. So she kills that guy and escapes, which means that she has now forfeited her life, not even to kill the legend John Wick, but just to kill some guy, right? Some like mid-level assassin dude that no one gives a shit about. It was actually kind of a nice, uh, nice guy. He was just like, hey, John, what's up, buddy? He seemed like a good dude. Yeah. I mean, he was an assassin, uh, so it's kind of evil. <laughs> but, you know. They have moral codes, apparently. I, I get <laughs> It's just like... It, <laughs> Like, listen, I, I, I won't burn down an orphanage. I mean, I'll burn down a post office with people inside of it, but not an orphanage. It's like, I mean, I guess that's <laughs> technically better. CJ just, he doesn't understand the business. I guess not. Uh, so, like, she's in the movie for a little bit longer, but I'm going to give you spoilers. She gets killed by uh, Winston from the Continental because she broke the Continental rules. She keeps rules. breaking Why all the rules. It's like fucking uh, do that. She broke them like over <laughs> and over and over. Mm -hmm. In fairness, uh, I think when the other guy was like holding on to her, she had already broken the Continental rules, and so she was gonna get like that's probably why she killed that guy because she was like it was like already done, right? She had already yeah, she probably signed her it. warrant. Maybe. Now I she's mean, just. If, lashing out. if that was the case, though, I feel like John should have maybe sent her to the Continental staff instead of some guy. Well, he had to but he had to book it. So he had, he had right. He's like, all right, I know, uh, one of Vigo's like main spots. Now I can uh go get him. Yeah, get him. So J John breaks into this er uh into this church. He finds the you know secrets. Um, just like crime facility right under the church 
and just go scorched earth on the whole operation, right? Um, it's another very badass scene, but unfortunately this time there's just like so many dudes that sent get sent in that uh, they are able to capture John Wick. Mm. Which is an absurd thing to do because he is going on a rampage. You probably just put him down, but they just, God right, damn it, do they respect him. They, you know, Vigo gives like a, a speech to him, right? And John's just like, yeah, I'm going to kill you later. And he's like, nah, you won't kill me later. My guys are totally going to kill you. But he leaves rather than using, I don't know, a gun. They decide that they're going to slowly strangle him to death. Because they, and, it's like, yeah, symbolic. It's it's because it's cool. It's epic. Uh, when all of a sudden, a sniper shot takes out the guy who was strangling John Wick. It's Willem Dafoe. Uh, he was actually helping John the whole time. He was Willem. Oh he shot. was Willem de friend, Fran. He was not Willem uh, Dafoe. Willem de oh, ally. <laughs> he was Willem de ally. Very good pun. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he was he was actually trying to help out John Wick this whole time. That's it. He shot the shot next to John Wick's head to wake him up before Perkins. He got would in. never miss. I never miss John Wick. I always <laughs> hit my target. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's you know he was an adoptive father. To he was Willem the father figure. He was Willem he wasn't gonna father turn. <laughs> he wasn't gonna turn on John Wick. Um, so. John Wick is, he's able to escape because of this, right? And uh, he gets out. John finds and kills Yosef. He gets that revenge. This makes Vigo very angry. Vigo captures and kills Willem Dafoe. No. This makes John. Uh, he's yeah, he's Willem def defired. He got Willem to fucked <laughs> up. <laughs> this, this makes John very angry. Mm -hmm. He's Willem uh, defoisted by his own petard. Foist, I think gotta, it's hoisted, you, but yeah. You got Willem, one more, Will, maybe? Willem de finally at peace. <laughs> He's dead now. Oh. All right, thank you. Uh, we're, we're done with this Willem de farce. Okay. okay. It was, <laughs> Will, it was Willem de fun <laughs> while it lasted, though. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... They're both they're both in full hatred mode right now, right? But Vigo is kind of like, this is all crumbling around me. John Wick is a pretty deadly dude. I'm gonna run away. Uh smart. So he's he's planning to escape, but Winston Good luck. gives John Wick the heads up because again, like three times over, don't break the Continentals rules. Don't offer someone money to break the Continentals rules. Mm -hmm. So he tells uh, John Wick where Vigo is. John Wick is able to intercept him. They have an epic final battle as Vigo is like trying to board the helicopter and escape. And John is able to kill that some bitch. He gets he uh, gets him. And also, John just randomly he does get a pit bull at the end of the movie. Uh, so Good. he's got a, he's got a dog again, and, and everyone's happy. Hey. A new doggy. It's a it's it's the hero's journey, Fran. You have to end where you began, you know, in a way, in a, in a manner of speaking. With a dog. With a dog. But now he's kind of back in the assassin world. He's not, yeah, not well, in sorta. the assassin world so, anymore. All right, that was the first movie. That was the most grounded one. We're we're getting off the rails from here. That was the normal one. That was okay. the one that just sets up all of the convention that will be subverted entirely for the rest of everything. <laughs> so John Wick has a pit bull, and we all had a happy ending. But then the movie was like hugely popular, and they're like, "Okay, we need to make some more of these." Right. This was yep, this was as a, these go. Yeah, this was a completely fine standalone movie, but. There, like, mm -hmm. and like a lot of the mystique and stuff, the background that Ethan was talking about didn't really exist by the first one yet. There, it was just like some of it was implied, but it was all mysterious and aloof, and that's what made it cool. Mm -hmm. But now they're gonna explain it. Now, yeah, yeah now we're we're getting into some of the heavy. People bits. want the lore; uh, they want the cinematic universe. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, it's like. What happens if when that first movie is supposed to be a standalone movie initially, then it's successful. Then the second movie gets kind of weird because they have to like set up for more movies. Right. Just like Shrek. Right. It's just, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I mean that's we're gonna do a Shrek two here. All right, Shrek two is the best one though. Um, so sorry, Shrek one so, idiots. That was uh, good. <laughs> speaking speaking of things that need to exist in a second movie to set up further movies. Mm-hmm. So I guess John apparently could not complete that impossible task that Vigo gave him on his own because it was impossible. So it was impossible. Hi. So he made a marker pact with a man named Santino Di Antonio. All right. Hi. Now, which which part do you want to know about? <laughs> I get. We'll do marker packs first. So marker packs. Marker packs. Packs. Like super packs. Oh, not mm-hmm. like packs of markers. Okay. Yeah, he yeah. gave him a pack of markers, so- and he said, "Don't use all of the yellow because that's my favorite color, even though and it's all blended don't in with the black." Use- Oh yeah, yeah the yellow. Oh, I, I told you not to use the yellow next to the black, oh. and now it's ruined. I just wanted to bumblebee. Ah. <laughs> uh, so marker packs are their own thing that we just happen to have never mentioned in the first movie. Of course. And they are very goofy. They were always there. Uh, so a marker pact is essentially like a blood pact, right? Uh, but okay. you do it with this like intricate, uh, like pocket watch looking marker, which you each of you like you prick your thumb and put your thumb into it on like one of the other sides, right? There has to be a fucking witness from, like, the high table or the continental for it to be official, and it's a whole fucking thing. Which, this is just what a contract is, but with more steps and blood to make it epic and assassins. <laughs> and more symbolism or something. Right. So the special, the special, thing, the special thing about the, the marker pact, right, is, like, you do it because you're asking someone to give you something, right? And... Mm-hmm. It's never really specified what John got from Santino in order to complete this impossible task. Presumably a very big gun. Yeah, a super cool gun that kills everybody. A mech suit. The the party who is, like, giving something the first round, right, they, ca- they in turn will, like, hold on to the marker, and when they present it to the other person, they can ask anything of the receiving party in the future, a- right? A- and anything. 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 And, and if that party doesn't deliver, can you guess what happens, Fran? They die. Their life is forfeit, yes. Yeah. We, we love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Consequences. So this is goofy for, like, a lot of different reasons, right? One of them... To me, is just that like John Wick had considered himself retired when he apparently had like a contract that specified that he needed to do anything that this crime guy asked, like just hanging over his head. One that he which doesn't sound one that he accrued in the process of leaving his. <laughs> it's like it's like if you were trying to leave your company and then you went to a different company and you were like, I need help leaving my company, and they're like, Oh, well, if you sign employment documents with us, then we will help you leave that company. And then you do that. And then you're like, ah, no more ties to any of any companies out there. I've done it. <laughs> Very silly. It's, it's uh, yeah, maybe not the best. And then the other thing is just this concept of anything, right? Because they just, anything. you, they can ask you, to break any of these continental rules, right? They can ask mm. you to do anything. anything. So if you break the continental rules, you die. But if you don't do what this person says, which might include breaking the continental rules, you die. So signing one of these things does seem to like basically give someone the right to just kill you. Well, it's- if well, they ask for anything, first- your life is something, Ethan. <laughs> Yeah. Well, also, my first thought was they if they make this uh, marker pack to mm-hmm. with somebody, and if they don't do it, then they'll you know forfeit their life. What if the thing that they want for them to do is to forfeit their life? 
and then they're just then they gotta do yeah, it. It's, it's either way. It's yeah, very like stupid. It's just it's, it's, just, it's, it's very not, stupid. You don't you, the, in the movie. They're like, no one should ever do this. You have to be a truly desperate person to do this. Which, again, I guess he was desperate to I, leave I, the assassin I, life, but like he just didn't by doing this. Like he 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 right. just made a different. Well, it's the kind of thing. It's like if no one should ever do this, then just don't make the fucking markers. <laughs> no, because they need they need some things in there to be like so, we need to ask anything of this person. Ca case in point, why the high table should maybe not support this whole marker system. Santino comes to John and asks him to kill his sister Gianna because she has just been promoted to a member of the high table instead of Santino. He isn't like that. And mm -hmm. so yes, this this high table sanctioned marker rule system is forcing John to kill a member of the high table. Okay. <laughs> I uh one classic male fragility, <laughs> am I right? Uh I guess. Two <laughs> well, he's upset that his that a right. female, his sister, got yeah, I, instead of him. I don't know if I there's don't... a speech where he's like, oh. "A woman should never be at the high table. It should be me, a God. penis haver." I mean, I'm not gonna. Lie. I didn't watch the second movie for this, but he might have said something like that because they try really hard to like bring home that Santino is a huge dick yeah. and just yeah. like. You hate him from moment one. Um, He's a yep. fucking asshole. They they made the sister kind of be like hot, but I didn't think she was hot. I thought she was too scary, and she has really long nails. <laughs> that was scary. I don't. Mm. Are you just afraid of powerful women? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I'm a man, so yes, but also I'm just <laughs> afraid of long nails. She can like stab Fair. you. I don't like needles. It's the same kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid she's gonna mm -hmm. poke me. So at first, John says, like, no, nah, man, I don't want to do this. The whole point was for me to be retired, remember? And I want to be retired again. Uh, but then Santino blows up his house. And what about his dog? Is, the dog is fine. We don't okay, have, good. spoilers, we don't have a dog death in this one. Good. People didn't like um, that in good. the first one, and they were like, fine, we won't, but it's a, <laughs> fine, it's a movie. Fine. It's not real. Also, many men are losing their lives as well. <laughs> Well, but the dog, human people. Uh, so, so yeah, John's pretty pissed about this, but he goes to the Continental, and uh, you know, Winston's just like, "I mean, you you signed the marker pact. He can do whatever he wants if you don't do what he says. Fuck he around can and blow find up out. Your, he can blow up your house. It's fine. <laughs> shouldn't have shouldn't have not done what he asked, and he won't blow up your house. Does the Continental allow pets? Yes. Uh, the pit bull come with him. Yes. Y yes. Yes. There Good. is a whole thing where uh, Sharon watches his, uh, his dog, dog for him. Yeah. He's out murdering people. That's cute. Um. So, you know, John's kind of like, "All right, fine. I will do this last job." Uh, so, Jana's having her her like acceptance into the crime like super such world like party. an eyes wide shut sex party thing. <laughs> it's crazy that the elites all have the same idea of what a good time is. <laughs> she's she's having this happen in Rome. So John goes to Rome. There's a continental branch in there too. So he you know sets up, gets prepped, and he is able to sneak in and get all the way to her where she is like taking a bath before getting to her sex party, I guess. Which is weird. Uh, Usually you do that the other way around, but yeah. You do, yeah. You, I mean, maybe I think you have to do after. one on, yeah, I think it has yeah. to go on both Oh no, they like uh, it. They like it stinky and dirty, Fran. No. Oh, they do. No. <laughs> um, so he confronts her but she is she is a powerful woman, and so she said, "I'm gonna kill myself rather than I'm gonna kill myself." <laughs> powerful woman. Um, so she does. She takes her own life, and John is like, "Man, that that felt bad, but I'm done with this now." Mm -hmm. However, pretty much immediately after this, Santino's men ambush John. Santino like at, in her bathroom. Like outside her bathroom, like just right there. Yeah, All right. it was a setup, Fran. 
Santino wants to kill him now so that no one will know who ordered the hit on his sister. But like, but he could have. But he was there. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Why? Why, like, why, why he... he could get his own dudes like within twenty feet of her, but needed John Wick to kill her is beyond me. But she whatever. obviously didn't have security at that. Oh my god. Okay. Well, so she. Yeah. She she does have like a head of security who is going to swear vengeance on John Wick. But there's just like not much for me to talk about with them because it's like they have some cool gunfights and kills them. The, then Great. they do yeah. Um, so yes, he he's planned he's just gonna kill John Wick here, but John Wick is John Wick, so he yeah. takes out all of these dudes and escapes. They have this like huge huge battle right, uh, but then like as it's ending, they just like crash into the um the bar of the continental Rome branch. And okay. so they just kind of like, are like, well, I guess now let's just sit and have a drink because yeah. now we're on They're holy on ground. continental ground. They can't fight anymore. <laughs> it is, they it could. is a really, be breaking the rules. I mean, it is a really funny, right. But they don't want to break the sound really funny. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it, it's, that sounds pretty comedic. It, there's a lot in this movie that is, as Ethan said, unrealistic, but like <laughs> as a viewer, you are entertained. That's the thing about all yeah. this. It's fully it's, entertaining. Like the idea of a bunch of bloodthirsty fine. assassins who, when they just happen to be in a certain building, are like, oh, well, even though we're trying to kill each other, we can't do it right now, so might as well have a drink about it, huh? Mm -hmm. Listen, we're professionals. Professionals need um, to have a drink to unwind. So uh, John's like, all right, got that done. But unfortunately, Santino... Now that his first attempt failed, he has put a $7 million bounty on John Wick's head for killing his Aww. sister. At least uh, it's higher than this first bounty. It's a pretty fucking high bounty. Okay. And be because it's so high, when he gets back to New York, like, every fucker out there is trying to kill John Wick, right? Yeah. Like, everybody is trying to uh, get, get him. And so we have this, like, huge long fight that is like out in the streets you know like around building all this crazy stuff is happening john gets hurt pretty bad and he is able to duck the assassins at the last moment by putting a gold coin in the cup of a homeless man because fran i don't know if i mentioned this before but all homeless people in New York are secretly part of a big underground gang called the Soup Kitchen that surveils the entire city. Listen, of course they listen, are. Listen, first off, of friend, they, they did this in Sherlock Holmes in the movie on the BBC or the show <laughs> on the BBC. But secondly, okay, I didn't watch that. Think, uh, think about it, Fran. If you were homeless for real, like a real homeless person who wasn't part of an underground spy assassin agency. Why wouldn't you just mm -hmm. buy a house? It doesn't make any sense, <laughs> which means every homeless person has to be part of an underground association. Yeah. Do you think they like intersect? Do you think that a bunch of people have like homeless networks, but they're like, they all just kind of like intermingle? And the actual high table is all the homeless people. Because they're like, we are pretending oh. like we have different networks of homeless people, but it's actually all the homeless people ruling the world from below. We call it the <laughs> the floor. Table? No, the just, the floor. <laughs> just the, 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 we're the uh, floor. We're the floor. have You have to say it with a long, oh, it's the floor. The floor. No, it would be like the, the we're the foundation. That's what, what you what's the founda your that's foundation. That's good. That's, CJ, that's, that's, that's really we good. We line the that streets. We are, everyone steps on us, but we're in control. We could crumble away at any moment and you'd fall to your doom. The foundation, all homeless people are actually highly intelligent, interconnected <laughs> agents in part of this network of, of I don't know, world control. Do you mm -hmm. think there's different branches in different cities of the homeless of where people are homeless? Like the homeless people in different cities are all part of the same. Right. Do you think like, do you think they like tra it's like we're transfer we're transferring you to to <laughs> New Mexico <laughs> division. Yeah. Cuz like every city has homeless people. So are they liter it's like every 
Like it's like a union thing. Oh like every homeless person <laughs> is part of it. Include even if it's like a small town with like a hundred people and just one person doesn't have a house. Is, is there is there a homeless guy who's just like, you know, I just really feel like I don't have any upward mobility here in New York branch. Could I go be homeless in Chicago? It's cold <laughs> there. <a> <laughs> That's okay. They have those secret underground passages that all the homeless people hide in. That's why there's still homeless people, even though it's so cold in Chicago. He's, he's not kidding about that part. Uh, yeah, it's called okay. Subway, and they have them everywhere, <laughs> and it's the only reason homeless people have. We need to take care of our all homeless right. people all in right. this country, guys. We do. We're, we're pro... Well, we're anti-people being homeless, but we're pro-homeless people. Hell yeah. Just like we're anti-government but we're pro Wait, government what? officials. Oh, <laughs> we love all government Wait, officials. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so they're not called the foundation here. They are the soup kitchen. They are run by this guy called the Bowery King, who is Morpheus. So it's very fun. We have Morpheus and Neo get together in the John Wick movie. Yeah. It is cool. And he goes, um, if you eat the blue soup, I will kill this man. But if you eat the red soup, it's a tasty three bean soup that is just yummy, yummy in your tummy. No, he, d he sort of downplays the soup motif. He's like a pigeon wrangler. He's, he's like a, he's a pigeon guy. Are, I guess the, I do. The they, homeless like, also control all the pigeons. Is that the implication? Birds aren't hey, real. Hey, you know hey Arnold told me that that was the case. He uses the he guy. uses the pigeons like carrier pigeons. It's like their their network yeah. of like communication yes. throughout the city. So I guess cities are controlled by homeless people and pigeons. I guess I could have guessed that, but it's just weird yeah. to hear it out loud. That's why there's so many pigeons. Right. Do you think that? Oh, do you man. think the spy? That's why so much do you think the spy pigeon robots that the government puts out there interacts with the soup kitchen pigeons that are just there yeah. being pigeons, and then the pigeons that have their own society <laughs> where they're like, "Oh, don't go by that one. That one's a robot pigeon. You can tell he's weird." Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. You have like the one guy who actually is down on his luck and is a homeless man, and he's so just, confused did, at the dynamics going at play. Did, did, did someone just put a fucking gold coin in your cup? <laughs> it's like, He's like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> go, go back. Go so, so to that pigeon, corner pigeons, over there. Pigeons, pigeons just start swarming him and pecking at him. <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, so the Bowery King is like, all right, I also think Santino is a dick. I will give you a gun. And that I will. That's my help for you to kill him. Wink. And John is like, "Okay, thanks. That is all I need." He could do it with all his right. hands. He's John Wick. Um, he kills so, that guy with a pencil at one point. Hell yeah! Yeah, and I think that's the Joker. He go. He goes. You want to see no. a magic trick? Then he smashes his head down <laughs> on the table. No, he does kill a guy with a book. That's worse. I think. Ah. He, I th I think that's in three. Oh, is it? Um, okay. I can't. It might be so he hasn't killed remember. anyone with a book yet. Um, Probably no. So John's got his gun. He's got some time to recuperate in the soup kit with the soup kitchen. Uh, he gets prepared. He has a big final clash with Santino and his men, right? Super epic fight and such. But Santino is just barely able to escape and make his way into the continental U New York. And John meets him there in the bar and he's just kind of taunting Johnny. He's just like, mm, I'm going to stay here for a very, very long time, he's, John. Yeah, he's Southern. He's no longer Italian. Now he's Southern. He goes, <laughs> I do believe I'll be having a, my mint <laughs> juleps here class. for quite some time. I guess I just associate being an asshole with being, <laughs> being, southern, a, being a Southern rich gentleman. Asshole. Yeah. Um, no, he says, he says that, but it's more Italian. He goes, <laughs> oh, my, my yeah, I'm a fucking a drink of my Italian drink. I love it. The spaghetti here. I stay here a long time. <laughs> it is, I don't even know. I guess wine or... Gelato? That's not a beverage, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> do you know what... Wait, Fran, do you gelato. know what gelato is? Yeah, it's like, it's like ice yeah, cream. Yeah, it's just ice cream. Tea. I guess yeah. he could just have like, his ice cream it? here. Okay. It's, made, yeah. it's like custard. Everything... Everything that we're saying is ridiculous. This whole situation is ridiculous. John Wick is done with this shit. So he shoots Santino right there oh, in the Continental. Shit. Mm -hmm. oh, he shit. broke the he broke the law. He broke the rules. He, uh, 
He broke the rule, the big rule. The big one that everyone else it, has been doing around him, but he's like, mm, mm-hmm. shouldn't be doing that, but then he does mm-hmm. it because he's he's over it. Yes. And it. he did also do that to one of the members of the high table because Santino took over his table, sister's right. position. Yeah. So that's oh. two so rules. He did a he did a bad here, and now the whole what is Doggo. Uh his doggo is just kind of has like plot armor because people were don't. mad well, about So the uh Sharon is like a good friend of John Wick. Like he's an yeah. employee to the Continental, but he like just really likes John Wick. And he's been taking yeah. care of his dog for him, like more as a f- into friend capacity than as like a, okay. a, a member of the Continental. And so he's been okay. taking good care of him while this has been happening. Okay, good. And it, good. like has him ready to go. So after at the he end. breaks the rules, his pit bull still has a little home. Well, he comes uh, with so- him. Yeah, he co- oh. he comes with him, but he's just like again, like plot armor safe throughout this. Right. Good. Um, so yeah, this is this is how the second movie ends with Winston just kind of like telling John, like, "Well, John, now the whole assassin world is going to try and kill you, ex- and the assassin world seems to like secretly be half the population." <laughs> yeah. So, which is it's like <laughs> at a certain point it's not a secret. It's just like why are we even being a secret? We are the majority of people here. Why would we need to? Like, who are we trying to fool, Greg? who's just some guy who doesn't know that all this is happening and it's all like a big joke. They're just trying to gaslight Greg and be like, oh yeah, society's what you think it is, Greg. It's all taxes and fucking governments and stuff like that. There's definitely not a bunch of stuff. And they're like, like everyone in the world, like the Truman Show is just in on the joke. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's just the Truman Show. Just for the, the small population of people who like think the world is the way it is. It's absurd. It's it is absurd and it's going to get slightly more absurd as we come into John Wick 3. He's John Wick has been excommunicado. Do you know about what do you know about the Catholic faith, Fran? N- hardly any. Okay. Well, honestly. In the Catholic faith, there's something worse than being dead and worse than like being a heathen? Yeah, it's worse than everything. It's called ex- oh. it's called excommunicado. Only the Pope can do it to you. And it's basically like, as far as the, as far as God is concerned, you don't exist anymore. You're ex, excom- oh. you're excommunicado from the church. No one will talk to you. No one's allowed to talk to you from the church. Anyone who does oh. talk to you in the church is also going to be excommunicado, and you're just oh. completely cut off from the center of it. They do the same thing where it's like John Wick is excommunicado. He's not allowed in any continental anymore. He's not allowed to interact with people who are associated with the Continental. He is he is a literal pariah, if you will. Mm-hmm. That's not good. And then, you know, also, sort of... Also, I thought Winston was the one who took care of the lady who broke the rules in the first movie. He was, but you see, Winston likes John Wick. So mm-hmm. Oh, he's, so he's not he's gonna... Just like, well, he gives yeah, him yeah, a head like, start. He's like, you've got right. a head start, John Wick, because God damn it, do I love you. <laughs> he gives him a kiss on the cheek. And then he gets like ten minutes. Get out heads. there, you scam! He gets like yeah, ten he minutes, gets an hour, or yeah. But he's just like, that's enough time for John Wick to disappear. And then that's when he gets his dog back, and they ride off into the obscurity. Uh huh. I mean, they don't do a good job of riding off into obscurity. The movie does start with like all the assassins in New York just getting like a fucking text, being like, yeah. "Hey, the the bounty on John Wick has been doubled to fourteen million, and he is excommunicado." Right. And everyone's like, oh, I'm going to kill John Wick now. Yeah, so even if you uh, are associated with the Continental, you can just kill him now because he's not a Continental, like, he's excommunicado. So, mm-hmm. like, the, even being at the Continental doesn't provide him any security anymore because he he's not a part of the association. He's just some guy now, so there's no... He doesn't get any of the protections that the, the system allots. Mm-hmm. So... John Wick is spending this huge chunk of time just like fighting to survive against all the assassins in New York, which is apparently a lot of fucking assassins. Yeah. And Maybe it's just a hub. Maybe it's just a big yeah, hub. I mean, it is. There's a lot of people, uh, you know, a lot of business happens there, both yeah. over and under It's a, it's a great place to do assassin work. Um, but so we have that going on. And meanwhile... There's this agent of the high table named the Adjudicator who has showed up. Because why not? And why not? 
Why? Yeah, why not? Why not? She is going around and it's just, she's just kind of like, all right, maybe we let things get a little too far here. Let's do some bookkeeping. <laughs> and she is punishing anyone even remotely related to John Wick killing Santino. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, well, because John yes. Wick, like, er- there were a bunch of people who were, like, aiding and abetting him the whole time, right? Like, he was, okay. you know, he had friends that were, you know, helping him out, you know, even though he yeah. was, like, paying for their services legitimately. Because yeah. he did this bad thing, they they send their adjudicator, which is another Catholic Church thing. But uh, mm-hmm. it's all, like, a big metaphor for the Catholic Church because they right. they, oh, again, they use Latin for everything, and the, it's all, like, secret society right. like said, bullshit. They're a cartel, they're the Illuminati, and they're a religion. So we okay. got, it's all put together. So, all right. um, so but yeah. any anyone who is John Wick's friend, basically, who helped him out during the last it. one, it's this movie's Aww. way of being like, he can't go hang out with his friends. Yeah. They're dead. Yeah, they're I'm dead there. now. It is, it is also, it's some hardcore bullshit. Like, for instance, she uh, she tracks down the Bowery King from the soup kitchen. Mm-hmm. And yeah. she's she's just like, you are uh you are going to be stripped of like all of your rights and, and privileges as leader of this group because you gave John Wick the gun that he used to kill Santino. And what? the Bowery King's just like, I didn't fucking know he was gonna shoot him in the Continental. And she's just like, I don't I don't care, you lose. But he's also like, um, I'm the pigeon man. You can't take my pigeons away. He's fucking insane, dude. It's really funny. Right. Yeah, she she comes to Winston and says, You are no longer in charge of the Continental because you gave John Wick an hour's head start, mm-hmm. and that's a no no. Uh, even though he was excommunicado, he helped him, so because he was mm-hmm. technically excommunicado okay. he, before he, hel- he helped him. He helped him. him by not actively killing him. Right. Which is okay. which again, that's how excommunicado works. If you aren't mm-hmm. if you don't actively like go after the people, then you are you're in defiance you're of it. Being punished for inaction. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. So she mm-hmm. she does this goofy thing with both of them where she's like, "You have 7 days to comply with this." Okay. Uh, or then then you're not in yeah, charge. Yeah, they anymore. do they do like this whole like like signing over doc you, there's like this whole like process part of a movie yeah there's this yeah there's this like process between the, uh, they're like talk about how the high table and the continental are associated but mm-hmm. they have their differences of opinion it's just it's a lot of like political stuff <laughs> meanwhile john wick is just yeah. not there they're just talking about right. him so it's like all right let's you know let's mm-hmm. get going so to be fair, this does give her time to make a quick trip to Japan and hire this ninja assassin named Zero, right? Of course. Him and, uh-huh. him and his whole crew. Okay. He is one of the best assassins in the world, and funnily enough, he is a huge John Wick fanboy. Yeah, he's like, you're, like, the, nice. you're the reason I got into killing. I love you. And he's like, okay, yeah, great. It's, it's, it's so cute. Like, she... She comes to to be like, I I need you to do some high table business. And he's like, no, nah, I don't really feel like it. Yeah. And then she's like, the business is killing John Wick. And he's like, oh, oh he re- that's so cool. Fran, what do you think his day job cover is? He works in Japan. <laughs> um, he works in Japan. Don't be racist. An- and he's an assassin. If it's an American made movie. Is he, he's right? a, he, yeah. he has, yeah, a, he has a, a Japanese person. He has a regular. Is the actor uh-huh. even Japanese? Yes. Uh yeah yeah it's uh, a okay, it's a good. famous guy camera um I presume that the American writers would make him a sushi chef you did it Fran yeah. you did it Hell yeah Fran the first try because he <laughs> likes knives Fran yeah <laughs> I'm very yeah. impressed you got it first try. <laughs> What other professions do Japanese people have? That's all they do. Right? That's I think that That's all they can do. you can you for cut- bonus points, can you like describe the scene of them coming in to like ask him for <laughs> help? Probably like actively like cutting a fish up. Yeah, what kind of like, fish? Like making sushi. What kind of uh, tuna? No, Fran. Big tuna. No, it's um unfortunately <laughs> it's the deadly fugu fish, the poisonous <laughs> one. The puffer fish? Yes. You know that whole thing where if you don't cut it right, then yeah. you die. He's cutting up one of those. If you don't cook it right, no, it's if, if you cut it right? yes, it's cut it right. Yes, because oh, you eat okay. it raw. 
You don't cook it at all. Oh, that's right. And then, but if you get any, if you get any of its poison gland in you, you die. So he's cutting up one of those, and at the end of the conversation, he just eats it off of the knife, and he's like, "Mm, "Nom nom nom nom." Scary. To show how precise he is and Japanese. Uh huh. To show Mm -hmm. how precise and Japanese he is. It's (sighs) very, it's very creepy, but it's it's also very good. Like the whole the whole thing of him just being like, "Oh." I would be honored to kill John Wick. That's radical. That's so fucking cool. I'll do it. Um, so while they are doing that, John Wick has decided that he is going to seek an audience with the uh, the elder himself, the leader That's of the high That's wandering table. around the Moroccan desert? That's right. Friend. Yeah, and so he he gets like some friends who owe him some big debts like – you need to help me out. Help me find the high elder. Does he have? And does so, he have other people that have blood packs for him? Is that part of it? God, I believe so. Because that would be absurd. If someone asks you to do something <laughs> with a blood pack, you should just be like, "Oh, I'll just have my guy do it." Because he has to do anything I say. <laughs> like it would always <laughs> right, just be yeah. down the line with those. <laughs> Right, it's like John John Wick could have just been like, "Oh, Santino wants me to kill his sister. I'll just have this other guy who owes me a blood pack." Do yeah, it. exactly. It's ridic- It's absurd. He's he's off wandering the Moroccan desert while uh, the adjudicator comes back with Zero, and they uh, like they meet up with the Bowery King. They slash him seven times, one time Aww. for each bullet that he gave to John Wick. Oh, and like for the guns like, it's, don't have. It's, that's not the right number of bullets for a gun. I don't think. It, so. I wouldn't know. I don't know either. I don't know. It might have been six for the bullets and one for the gun itself, but it is. Uh, it's seven slashes. Sure. Okay, that seems unnecessary, um, but all right. <laughs> and well, uh, does he die from it? I think it's implied he, he does not. Yeah, die from says, it. he doesn't actually perish, so it's yeah, right. It's like a four. It's like a forty it's lashes funny. thing. That's probably right, biblical. It's not great. It's a big, it's a big punishment thing, right? But yeah, they don't kill him. Okay. Um, and then, and then they just say like, "You're not the leader of the soup kitchen anymore." Yeah. But then he's like, "I'm um, the pigeon man. The pigeons would always listen to me," or something. Right. He's like, "Ah, he's like, yeah. you don't have the authority." You know, that's that. exact quote. Yeah. And then he goes, um, "If you take the blue pigeon, <laughs> it will show you where to get a oh. nice bowl of soup. Uh-huh. But if you take the red pigeon." <laughs> Then it will be your friend. That's not a pigeon. That's a that's a toucan. <laughs> but I like him. <laughs> he's he's very friendly. <laughs> so they do that. They they want to go do the same thing. They want to take out Winston because you know Winston has refused to relinquish the Continental, right? Uh, but the thing is that like it's a little harder to get to the guy who runs the Super Assassin Center than it is to get to the, the, the soup. <laughs> No, 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 I'm talking about Winston. It's a little harder for them to get to Winston than it is for them to get to the guy who runs the soup kitchen. Yeah, because he's got the whole Um, Continental as a, you know, buffer. Right. Uh, So, John is finally able to find the Elder in the desert. And the Elder offers him a clean slate if he kills Winston. Why? So, because Winston is causing problems for them. So, to be clear, to be clear what? on the 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 circle what? of events here, this is off. Ugh. The the high table got mad at Winston because he helped John Wick, and then offered John Wick amnesty if he kills Winston for helping John Wick. Again, this this, this only works <laughs> if they give John Wick the human person like as much like autonomy and like self governance as all of these other th- like they treat John Wick as the as the singular person as like equal power level to like the continental <laughs> it its entire framework and its existence but it's cuz like Winston has like differences of a, they don't, I don't even think they talk about it, but he's like I think that the high table should run things differently Whatever that means, I think we should kill no, more no, no. or less people. I don't know. And then, th- <laughs> and then they're like, "Well, we don't like that," but he's in a position of power. And when you have, I mean, at any high level, Fran, govern. What do you, what are governments? They're just groups of people, man. They don't. There's no actual rules stopping them from fighting each other, but they all have their little frameworks they surround themselves with. Their people and their armies, and they don't want a big conflict. But if they can get John Wick 
a one man army to just kill him and they can replace him with their own figurehead. Well, then they get to mm. control it. Just like how the American government sends assassins down to South America to kill democratically elected leaders so that they can overthrow their democratically Fucking elected cut, cut governments. This and then he's, he's they saying will... too much. Cut it. <laughs> get, cut get it him, right kill now. Him. <laughs> so John John agrees to this, uh, and the the elder does also make him cut off his ring finger as just like a sign of good faith. What? Like it's a yakuza thing, Fran. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I looked high and low because I thought with like the that order the of a. I thought with the Order of Assassin connection and that the Assassin Creed guys cut off their ring finger, I was like, is this a thing? And it's nothing. It's just like- Well, Ethan- So John Wick just stole from Assassin's Creed. Got it. Yeah, basically. Even if you knew the lore of Assassin's Creed, you would know that they need to cut off their finger in order to properly operate the wrist blade that they attach to their wrist. I don't know why, but they have to do that. I'm saying I thought there was a connection, but there's no connection. Like <laughs> they just there is no. It's like, literally just a yakuza thing because people think it's like epic for assassins to like cut off their fingers, even though that would just make them a worse assassin <laughs> in whatever they're doing. There's That's why no I it was a pinky it, for the yakuza. It's a, well, they could just keep cutting off fingers depending on if you like. Yeah, you, but you start you start at the with pinky. the pinky, right? But like yeah. The, so why are we skipping straight to just, the ring finger? It just it just doesn't make I mean, any sense because it's like. Doesn't. We want the elite assassins of the world, and we're going to maim them first, and then they can go. Uh-huh. Do it's just it's it would make so, no sense to do that. There's there's no connection to the Assassin's Creed thing for the John Wick movies. It's it's very much like a power move by the Elder because John still wears the ring from his wife, right? Yeah, so and he's just like I require blood sacrifice, but also I want to represent that you are no longer the man who married your wife anymore. He is dead now. You are, now you are John Wick, the cool guy, not John Wick, the The beta cuck husband. So, John gets to the Continental and meets up with Winston and the Adjudicator and then is like, shoot, I'm not gonna kill my boy Winston. Mm -hmm. And so the adjudicator is just like, all right, this has gone wrong. I am deconsecrating the Continental. The Continental is no longer special, says the high table. Oh, uh, shit. They send in just like this huge group of like heavily armed dudes. John and Winston and Sharon like all go down into the Continental basement where all the big guns are and yeah. like equip up. We have this like crazy huge long battle. Uh, Zero's men comes in and John kills them. John battles Zero and they have like a fucking, uh, I believe they have a katana battle. Yeah, it's a, if of course I, they do. Yeah. yeah. Of course it's they epic. Do. He's a ninja named Zero. They're gonna do a katana fight. <laughs> of course they are. It is, it's very epic. John does win in the end and Zero's just like, oh, did I do a good fight, John? Mm. And, and John's like, yeah, man, that was a good <laughs> that fight. That was a good fight and then he kills him. Uh, so they like in the end they've killed everybody who the high table has sent at them and the adjudicator is just kind of like sitting there arms crossed and is like fine I guess you guys win yeah and she so she says to Winston "All right, we will forgive you and reconsecrate the uh, Continental if you kill John Wick. Which, at this point, Fran, to fill it in, we have John Wick killed a member of the High (sighs) Table. Winston didn't kill him for that. So the High Table asked John to kill Winston, and John refused to do that. And so then the High Table asked Winston to kill John for that. Well, no, no, you missed a step, right? They're asking John Wick to kill Winston because Winston didn't kill John Wick when he had the chance to do so, right? Or did you say that and I missed that? Part? Yeah, that was part. <laughs> okay, of it. I just blocked that one out. There's okay. there's some Ugh. circular li- list. Like as an organization, if this was it's happening, well 
you would just like cut your losses and be like, don't <laughs> do that anymore. Like, just no, don't do right? that. Like, it's, it's obviously it's the not. punishment system is not working. So just please stop. Scrap right, it right. All. Listen, Start we over. need we need to go do some like internal restructuring. <sighs> but for now, you guys just don't do that anymore. Stop it. But that's not stop what it. happens. What happens is Winston is immediately like, okay, and shoots what? John. And they're they're like on the roof of the Continental. John falls <sighs> off the roof of the Continental. For fuck's sake. Uh, this fall should have killed anyone. It was a very goofy scene, but we need a fourth movie. So uh-huh. John survives this fall, and of course he his battered body is collected by a homeless man. Of course, and. They bring him to the Bowery King, who is like, I am pretty mad at the high table right now. Uh, and John is like, man. <laughs> I too am pretty mad at the high table right now. Oh, and God. like Winston and the adjudicator, like we cut to them on the roof and they're just like, I don't know if he's dead. And if he's not, this would be very bad for us. And that, like, that's the is end it? of the movie. Yeah. So not reconsecrated. Well, the, no, it is. It's yeah. no, yeah. It's it's re, you know they're like okay, Winston, you shot him. Like it's all good. So uh, the status quo of the continental dead, is restored. But I, no. I, so like I'm pretty certain that like Winston did this on purpose. He was like, yeah, like, like, it's, like are we gonna play sta- on he, like, that? Like staged it. I knew whatever. he would be fine. Right. Or or whatever. But like so the the movie's called Parabellum, which comes from a Latin phrase. What? Which uh yeah John Wick three movie? Parabellum no, no three. this this one so okay. this this it's mm-hmm. called Parabellum because it's from a Latin phrase where it's like if you want peace then prepare for war and okay. the Parabellum part is the prepare for war part so the movie's basically okay. called John Wick Prepare for War and it's Do all like movies have Latin subtitles no nope, just this only one. that one just this one. <laughs> It is. John they just, they just thought that is, Parabellum no. sounded cool. John Wick One is just John Wick Listen, One. John Wick Two is something. Ch- chapter Two. Chapter Two, and then and this one's John Wick Parabellum. Chap. Yeah. Chapter Three Parabellum, and then it's John Wick Chapter Four. What the fuck? They were like, this one specifically, we need the Parabellum. But like this one was like, prepare for war. They were doing war the whole time. <laughs> They're not preparing Whoa. for anything. They're just reacting. That's the opposite of preparing. They're just going back and forth. They're like, I don't fucking know. Is them being, is John Wick being almost dead preparing for war? Are they preparing for war in the middle of John Wick 3 and 4? Like sometime between where we don't see it? I don't know. Anyway, the new movie's probably going to be epic, though. It's probably going to be really epic. I mean, I presume they're talking about, like, okay, he's fine. It's finally, like, no more individual dudes John Wick is killing. He is going to come for the high table, the high table. like, as a concept. As, like, an organization or yeah. like an institution. Also, John yeah. Wick, like, said he was going to work for the one guy, the elder, and then he just, like, fucks right off, like, the first chance he gets. It's so weird. The third <laughs> one's so fucking weird, man. It's, You're not supposed to think very, too hard about it. Really not. It's very weird. It's like, if... It, if he was going to immediately betray that guy, why did he go all the way to the Moroccan desert to get his finger cut what off? What would be what's what was the point of all that? It's just uh, it's silly. They're just like I think they're maybe out of ideas. And they're just like I don't know. And then this epic thing happens, and the cool. We the gotta cool somehow make a structure. Put all these fight cool interactions. In it's the thing is where you, in the first one you have like a really cool setup, like the idea of the continental being like a neutral ground where all these assassins congregate. Like it's a cool idea, but yeah. then they're like, we people like that idea. We need to like do stuff with it. We have to yeah. like make it, it has to be a political power, and there's power struggle because people like that. I think in their movies. And people, yeah. people like the the final the final man. People, people like the dragon movies with all of the people fighting each <laughs> other, and their motives are confusing to the audience, which is us, the people watching it. So that's why we like it because mm-hmm. we're like, what are their true motives? Even though it's <laughs> one of my favorite things in shows that they do all the time is they have characters act in a way that doesn't make any sense because. Mm-hmm. they're supposed to be confusing us, the audience. So they're doing it to confuse <laughs> right. us, the audience. But in the actual thing that they're doing, there's a completely different motive that makes no sense because they needed a motive for them to do that, even though the only real reason they're doing it is just to throw us off. 
so that we mm-hmm. don't catch on to their plan as mm-hmm. pe- as as mm-hmm. people yeah. watching through the fourth wall. Mm-hmm. So, interestingly, these first three movies, it has all been the the same main writers, but the fourth okay. movie is a different team of writers. Oh, so I Just think get wild. I think we're yeah. I think we're gonna have like one of two directions. Either one, they are going to like try their hardest to make a logical explanation for all of the silly shit that happened in like the second and third movie. Or two is that they're just going to try and outdo the second and third movie yeah. it's and make it just like <laughs> just give it it's give it the old that one. try. Well, that is our prediction. Is the, huh? Is the choreography the same? Is the fight choreographer going to be the same at least? Oh my oh. god, Fran! Now you're calling me out. I didn't look I that don't up. No, Fran. How many fights? Well, that's the whole point. You watch the movies is to watch the fights. I watch it for the political intrigue, Fran. I like to see all them talking about all the rules that they have that none of them follow. <laughs> See, I need to make sure my mom's going to stay awake through the fourth film. Did she so not? There needs to be good fights. Yeah, there was a lot I of not good there fights, was a, she will there sleep. There was a lot of wandering through the desert in the third one. That's one of the main <laughs> reasons I couldn't get all the way through the Bible. It's just a lot of that. And I was like, <laughs> just fell asleep. I will say, considering we just made an entire episode on it, I will assume the fourth movie will be good. Okay, well, that <laughs> that is our prediction for the movie. Let us know if we did a good job preparing you for it. But until then, that's the end of this episode. We've reached the lore you know uh, chapter four of this episode, which means it's over now, and you'll have to wait for a new one to come out pretty soon. Uh, we thank you, precious audience, again. Uh, we know that you statistically all have a pretty busy schedule of murder and uh just doing sort of like shady not government but basically government except hits. you greg except Especially you greg if you're in new york uh but we appreciate you taking your time to to listen to us it means it means a whole lot to us uh if you want to go ahead and rate us highly on whatever podcast platform you are listening this to which by the way this podcast is on all podcasting platforms and youtube if you can imagine uh, so go ahead and subscribe, like it, upvote it, or whatever. Send it to Rate send it, it send it to your mom. See if she likes it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we do appreciate all of the feedback we get from you guys. We love it, in fact. Um, if you want to check out a little bit more of us, we have a stream at twitch.tv slash cooking with spices. We've been streaming on there lately. Some of the latest games, some older games that we're just having some fun with. Uh, check it out. It's a fun time. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, as we mentioned. We've got some Let's Plays on there. There will be more Let's Plays soon. Um, and on top of that, we just have all sorts of stuff. There should be links in whatever description for the show there are for you. I think that's going to be it. Except, of course, for thanking Gailstorm Kitsune for the graphics and Apaja for the intro and outro to the show. A banger. Just like the John Wick club fight scene, if with the gun noise, if makes. they replaced, mm-hmm. if they replaced the John Wick club fight scene with our intro and outro music, it would be just as good, if not better. I would say. <laughs> uh, but until then, uh, we are going to have to grab our bug out bags, go underground, and hide away for another two weeks while we prepare our great machinations which is just another show for you guys so we'll see you then uh but until that day comes i've been cj and i've been ethan i've been fran and if you if you click the red button it will subscribe you to the (laughs) channel but if you click if you click the blue button then that i don't think that is a button uh, I can't wait to go see John Wick Chal- Chapter Willem Dafoe. Chapter Chapter Willem de Finale. Willem <laughs> Willem de Oh no. Willem de For Real. He wasn't Willem dead. Willem de Final. Willem defying death. He's actually alive oh. since the first one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs>